Thank you, Teresa. That was beautiful and just a great message. If you have your Bibles today, would you turn to Lamentations, the Old Testament book of Lamentations. We're going to begin looking at verse 19. If you've been with us for the last few weeks, I have a confession to make. We're going to break from our routine. The last few weeks, I believe about the last four weeks, we've been looking at... Um, the first missionary journey of Paul, but this Sunday before Thanksgiving, I uh, felt led to this particular text. Next week, Lord willing, we'll return and actually finish out our messages on uh, Paul's first missionary journey. So, uh, Lamentations chapter 3, beginning in verse 19. There's a couple in my hometown Joe and Kathy Vaughn, and they have been dear to me over the years, and it's interesting how God providentially places people in your lives, and Joe and Kathy were that to me. Um, they began a youth choir back in the early 1980s, and I had the opportunity to be a part of that youth choir. Uh, it grew to numbers around 50 or 60, and really the entire youth group was built around the youth choir. Um, we had the opportunity to sing around the state. We would uh, go to Eagle Irie and carry out uh, music camp and things. And actually, we were the top rated youth choir. If you picked up the phone and called the state and they said, we want a youth choir to come in, they would call us. But the neat thing about that was not just what was happening in the music, but God was saving young people. I can still remember sitting on the uh, hillside at Eagle Irie sharing Christ with a young man named Steve Stratton. He accepted Christ as a 13-year-old. Uh, I came back four years later. He was just shy of 17 or right around 17, and I did his funeral. He was out fishing, was struck by lightning, and died. One of the real blessings I had last week, or uh, a couple of months ago, rather, is the uh, opportunity to see his older brother, Bob, leading in a revival service. And if you've ever worked with youth, you know where I'm going. I see Eric back there. Sometimes when they're 14 or 15 and they're keeping you up till 2 or 3 in the morning, you're thinking, Lord, why is this going on? But then when you see them when they're in their 40s and they're serving the Lord, it's one of the real blessings. Really, this youth group and youth choir was an impetus for God's call in my life. God utilized it because after I finished my time singing, I would come back and work with the choir as a mentor, and it was a true blessing for me. I remember a lot of the songs that we sang, and one of the songs that was especially dear to me was a song written by the late Andre Crouch, Through It All. You may be familiar with that song. I laugh all the time when young people sing songs like that. It's through it all, and you're thinking, man, you're 14 years old. How much have you really been through? But for us, it really was uh, a blessing to be able to sing that song. And I've been thinking about it the last few weeks, and the first verse of the song goes like this. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times when I did not know right from wrong, but in every situation, God gave blessed consolation that all my trials come to only make me strong. And then the refrain says, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. You know, this past Wednesday, we had a group gather and uh, the middle of the week, we had a meal. Paul shared a devotion right at the beginning of that. And, and he read from 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, a verse familiar to many of us. It says, in everything, give thanks for this is God's will in Christ Jesus. It's not a suggestion. It's not a thought. Paul makes it very clear that we are to give thanks to God at all times, in all situations, in all seasons. And to be honest, our default mode does not lead us that way. We're often, as the song just sang, we're praying and looking for immediate response, immediate blessing, and sometimes we're called to wait. And the challenge as we look at God's word today is to consider ourselves and are we willing to be thankful even when. 
And so as we look at this word this Sunday before Thanksgiving, I hope that this season is a good season for you, that the waters are still. But if this is a difficult season for you, maybe you've gone through the loss of a loved one in the past couple of years. Maybe you're going through a health crisis. Maybe you're going through a time of personal crisis or challenge today, then, then I believe that what God has to share with us here out of Lamentations chapter 3 will not only challenge us, but to encourage us to be grateful even when. Look with me at uh, Lamentations chapter 3 in, in verse 19, beginning in verse 19. Jeremiah says, remember my affliction and my homelessness, the wormwood and the poison, I continually remember them and have become depressed. Yet I call this to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish. For his mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will put my hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the person who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is still young. Let him sit alone and be silent, for God has disciplined him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. Perhaps there is still hope. Let him offer his cheek to the one who would strike him. Let him be filled with disgrace. For the Lord will not reject us forever. Even if he causes suffering, he will show compassion according to the abundance of his faithful love. For he does not enjoy bringing affliction or suffering on mankind. Let's pray together. Father, as we open your word today, we thank you, Lord, that not only do you give us the command and implore us to be thankful in all seasons, in all situations, at all times, and in everything. But Father, you give us the capacity to be able to do that. Father, there's some today, maybe this is a season of difficulty. I pray you would encourage and exhort through your word this hour, and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Jeremiah writes Lamentations, and he's really writing from personal experience. You know, have you ever heard someone say something and they're giving you advice and the first thing you says, what do you really know about this? Well, Jeremiah knew what it was to go through difficulty. In fact, he had a particular name that was given to him. He was known as the weeping prophet. And, and he wept because he faced so much adversity in his life. There was adversity within. There were people who were hearing his message. It was going in one ear, out the other. He was imploring them to, to follow God and the people were not observing. But also there was difficulty without. There were persecutions. There were times when really he was left in a pit and times when he was threatened by individuals. And so he writes Lamentations, a lament, as a spokesman for the people of God following what was one of the most terrible things in the history of Israel to that point, and that was the fall of Jerusalem, the hands of Babylon. It's sometime shortly after 586 B.C., and he's speaking while the people are in exile. And so in verse 19, he speaks of homelessness, and basically what it meant was he was at a place that was really not home. And so as we look at the five chapters of Lamentations, chapter 3 is really central to the book. We cannot really gain a true spiritual grasp of everything the book shares without really looking at chapter 3. And at the heart of chapter 3 itself are the verses that we just read. As we go into this Thanksgiving season, your hardships may be many. You may wake up every morning and think, oh no, here's another morning. It may be that 2023 has been so difficult for you that you're ready to bid it goodbye here in a couple of months. If that's the case today, then I believe God's word has, has an answer for you this morning. If you notice in your Bible, um, the verses are basically divided into three verses. In other words, you see the Hebrew alphabet and there's a division in each of them. And so I want to look at each of these and uh, two of them we're going to look together. The others we're going to look individually because I want to see four looks 
that Jeremiah had when he was going through difficulties, when, when, when life was not easy for him or for his people, I want to look at what he considered what he did. And the first is this. He certainly had an inward look of sorrow. We see that in verses 19 through 21. You know, whenever we face a difficult situation in our life, a hardship, it is important it, it's pertinent that we come to grips with the situation, that we actually understand the situation. Years ago, uh, one of the terrible uh, mass killings happened in our nation, and they were interviewing a mother some 12 hours after her child had lost his life. And as the person in the national broadcasting company was, was interviewing that person, she says, oh, I'm doing great. Everything's going well. And I almost wanted to go through the screen and shake her, not in a violent way, but in a way to say, it's okay to say, I'm not not doing okay. I, I, I didn't think at that time the Sunday school answer was the right answer. So as we look at uh, verses 19 through 21, we see that the writer of Lamentations, Jeremiah, is dealing with the situation head on. In verse 19, as a prayer to God, he's saying, remember my affliction and my homelessness, the wormwood and the poison. Remember my affliction, it's friendly fire and foe alike. Remember my homelessness. Again, he's in exile. Remember the wormwood, the bitterness, the, the, the poison that I'm, I'm going through. In other words, he's saying, God, I'm struggling here. We're struggling here. He, he wasn't denying it. His head wasn't in the sand. He was acknowledging to God he was going through a difficult time. And then he follows it by, in a way, giving a testament from himself. He says, I continually remember them and have become depressed. And so he goes to God. He takes the petition. He's saying, remember what we're going through. Take note of me here. Then in verse 20, he follows that by saying, I am remembering this continually and I'm depressed. What I appreciate about Jeremiah, and we see it here, and we see it in Jeremiah chapter 12, in Jeremiah chapter 20, is he was very real. He was very real in what he dealt with. He didn't pretend it. He didn't just put on a smiley face. He dealt directly with God. But this is the key. He did not stay there. I, I used to love to play the board game Monopoly. I'm not a big board game player now, but you know that first corner you get to is jail. You don't want to go there. You want just visiting. You want to be on the perimeter there, not in the middle of the jail. I hated when I got that thing, go to, go to jail, go directly to jail. Uh, don't pass go. Don't get $200. And that was the bad news. But the good news was if you just happened to go by and you said, hey, I'm just visiting. I'm not staying here long. And so Jeremiah, it was okay for him to be in that spot, but it was not okay for him to stay in that spot. And that's why verse 21 is so key to everything we read. He's saying, God, hear my case. I'm going through hardship. I am continually remembering it. In other words, it's playing through my mind, this situation that I and the people are going through. I've become depressed. But then there's that transition word yet. He says, yet I call this to mind, and therefore I have hope. So he's moving from that spot in the corner. He's moving beyond it, and he's leaving it behind and moving in a new direction. If this has been a difficult season for you, and in a crowd this size, it most certainly is. Some people who have gone through this know this. It is okay to be real in it, to talk to God in it. It is, it is okay even to ponder it, but don't stay there. Don't stay there. Follow the counsel. Follow the example of verse 21. Immediately move your look. Because Jeremiah began with an inward look of sorrow, but we see secondly, he had an upward look of hope. And we see that in verses 22 through 24. He moves from the inward look of sorrow, considering the situation, 
to the upward look of hope. That transition in verse 21, he says, yet I call this to mind. What is he calling to mind? These three verses that are following. Now, there are two things of note in verses 22 through 24. One, even if you've not memorized this portion of scripture, if you love the old hymns, you're familiar with it. Great is thy faithfulness. You read this and you pick out the words that are in that hymn. A number of years ago, I learned that hymn by heart. I don't know a lot of hymns by heart. Uh, to God be the glory we sang is one of them. I don't have to have the book open because it was one of my favorites. But great is that faithfulness. I memorized it not for a spiritual reason, but a less than spiritual reason. When I was in seminary, one of our friends was married and uh, invited me to be in the wedding. And everybody else had the paper. But guess what? The groomsmen had no words to the song. Well, they wanted to sing every word of great is that faithfulness. And I was one of about three three preacher boys up there, and I said, if I'm just tucking my head down, they'll say, well, he's, he's real spiritual. So I learned, great is thy faithfulness. You know, it's great to learn the hymns, to learn the choruses that minister to your heart. But, but that hymn is based on these verses that we just read, a hymn, one of the great hymns of hope. But I want you to see a second truth about this passage, and it's this. It is the core passage for the entire book. In fact, you cannot understand everything that's happening, all of the petitions, all of the sorrow, all of the heartache without this upward look to God. You see, there's a real danger when we go through hardship and it is to be filled with sorrow. It is to be inward looking. It can be a broken relationship the loss of a loved one, especially during seasons when the nights are getting longer because the time has changed. The table place setting across from you is now empty. It can be difficult. It could be that you're going through a health crisis and you can look back and say there are times that have been better. But we need to follow the example of Jeremiah here in that transition that he moved from looking at his situation to looking up to God. God is still good. You know, there's a key word in, in this three verse segment, and it's that word mercies. It's hard to translate that exactly, but it carries out the idea of God's covenant love. We've been studying about the nation of Israel on on uh, Wednesday evenings and Ezekiel 16, I believe it's verse 60 that speaks of God's eternal covenant for his people. And so as we look at God's uh, mercies here, his covenant, it does not vacillate. So even if our situation changes, we know that God is unchanging. Notice what it says of God's mercies in verse 22. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And so as we combine verses 22 and 23 in speaking of the mercies of God, he says they never end. In other words, they're continual, but not only are they continual, but they are afresh every day that God gives us grace, that he gives us mercy every day in the situation uh, that we're in. And so we see that he moves from an unsettled state to the settled state. And it's this, that his stability is found in God. It's hard for us to understand verse 24, where it says, the Lord is my portion. When we think of portion, we think of uh, portions that we eat or at a meal or whatever. But portion actually has to do with an inheritance. And so what he's saying here is, you know, we can have an inheritance, but we know the market fluctuates and we know all of that fluctuates. We know that situations in our lives, but when the Lord is our portion, when we are focused on him, that inheritance never changes. He's unchanging and his relationship with us is afresh every morning. And so we see that Jeremiah had this upward look of hope and it was when he focused on God. But I want you to see a third look, and that's this. Jeremiah had a quiet look at his situation. So he looked at his situation initially. He even pled to God and said, consider me. Then he moved his look up to God and he said, you're my portion. Your mercies are everlasting. Your mercies are fresh every morning. I can count on you. You're unchanging in my difficult situation. But then he moves his sights back down to earth 
in the situation, but there's a distinction. At first, he was looking at his situation. And in a way, he was saying, look at me. Look at what I'm going through. He's saying to himself, look at what I'm going through. And it was leading him to depression. But then we see that he looks at his situation differently. After he had considered and set his focus on God, he had a quiet look at his situation. He went from looking at his situation to looking into his situation. And maybe you've been there. You've gone through a crisis. I look out even here, there's some, and you would say amen to that. It hit me at first. I looked at the situation. My eyes moved to God, and then I was able to get a different perspective on my situation. It may not be easy, but I see God's hand in it. Let me say one thing that we're not to do when we go through difficulties that can often be our default mode, and that's complain. C complaining is a sin. When we, when we begin to complain, then we know that we're not having our eyes on the Lord. The people complained in the wilderness, and what did it lead to? It led to all types of difficulty. Uh, we see in Moses' day, there were people who complained about his leadership. You know what happened to those particular people? The ground was opened and swallowed them. Jeremiah even tried to complain, and God didn't take his complaining too easily. He said, man, if you can't run with men, how are you going to run with the horses? In other words, if you think it's tough, how are you going to be able to stand up? Complaining is often impulsive. And it doesn't lead to the big picture, but we're guilty of it. And we need to uh, adjust our thoughts and move from looking inwardly at our situation and focusing on ourselves to looking into the situation and what God is doing. Because complaining leads to negativism, and negativism is a bad contagion. So instead of complaining here, Jeremiah com commits to three responses toward his and the people's hardship. And the first is this, patient endurance. The song Teresa sang, it was a prayer. But if not, God is still God. So as we look at, at verse 25, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the people who, seeks, who seek him. Actually, we want immediate answers to prayer. We want immediate relief, don't we? I, I've been thinking, I've never been a gamer, but my kids love playing video games. Uh, if I took a video game, I would get to the first level and I would be done. But I know people that will get to the 20th or 23rd level. You know what? To get to that point, there have got to be a lot of failures, a lot of restarts, and, and you would attest they're way beyond what I would be. And so one of the signs of spiritual maturity is when we can go through difficulty and still be able to patiently endure it, not expecting a quick result. And so here we see that Jeremiah had patient endurance, but not only that, he had quiet introspection. We talked about the difference in looking at and looking into the situation. Here in verse 26 and verse 28, he is looking into it. It is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. Now, we're waiting for our ultimate salvation, the Lord coming back. But here what he was speaking was salvation from the specific situation of the exile and everything that affected him and the people. And so he says, it, it is good to wait quietly, not kicking and screaming. Verse 28, let him sit alone and be silent. In other words, when, when, we, when we quietly introspect and look into a situation, this is what happens. We're able to say not in a bad way, but another way. God, why is this happening? Not in anger, but then what are you doing? God, what are you doing through this. That's what introspection is. And so he's saying that it is good to wait patiently. It's good also to have quiet introspection. But the third thing is humble compliance. You know, there's two letters that are flipped around between complaint and compliant. 
And, and there's a, a vast difference in the two. The compliant person might not really want something to happen, but understands that this is the season, this must happen. Jesus himself said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me in speaking about his death. Yet he said, in compliance to the Father's will, nevertheless, what you will, not what I will. And so as we look at verse 29, and speaking about the one who, who waits patiently, who waits quietly, let him put his mouth in the dust. Now that sounds strange, but that's a sign of humility. It's a sign of lowering. If we were to put our mouth to the dust, we would put ourselves as low as we could be. So what he's saying is let the one who is going through it humble himself, humble herself, because there's still hope. Let him offer his cheek to the one who would strike him. That was mentioned, a prophecy that was fulfilled. Jesus Christ went through that. What does this speak of? Humble compliance, of being willing to go through this and say, God, I don't understand why I'm going through it, but I'm willing to go through it in your strength. But I want, before we leave this section, to look at verse 28, where it says, let him sit alone and be silent for God has disciplined him. You know, a lot of words have negative connotation. One is the word discipline. It doesn't often get a fair rendering. Most of the time when I mention uh, or someone mentions discipline, you think of pain, punishment, meanness. But that's not necessarily true in this case because there are times when an athlete must go through discipline. Is it physically tough? Yes, but the purpose of that discipline is to, is to affect us, to make us greater, to make us stronger. And so discipline can be a good thing. And it may well have been, and, the, uh, and uh, Jeremiah understood this here, that he and the people were going through a time of discipline so that they would be blessed and would be a blessing. I wonder, do you look at your hardship in that way? That God would not just bless you but that God would use what you're going through to be a blessing to someone else, to be a blessing to someone else, that God would affect something beyond your situation. And that leads us to a fourth and final look. After he looked at his situation, spoke to God, had gone through the difficulty, he then looked up to the Lord, who was his portion, who was faithful, whose mercies were fresh all the time and were eternal. Then he was able to look back at his situation and say, I need to go through quiet introspection, God, what you're doing. I need to patiently endure uh, what I'm going through in this situation, and I need to humbly be compliant but then Jeremiah had, fourthly, a forward look to his future. And we see that in verses 31 through 33. Even the longest day I was reading this morning in, um, in Deserts in the Stream. And Ms. Calman wrote this, even the longest day has a sunset. And every deep snowfall eventually melts away. This is the last look, and it's a good one, because the writer here, Jeremiah, is able to look at his situation from a broader perspective. He wasn't so consumed in his depression that he mentioned earlier that he couldn't make that transition and look to God who was working. But he was able to look even beyond that to the future. Uh, there are five words, you've heard them in the Bible, and it came to pass, and it came to pass. Now, I'm not saying that, that originally it meant that. Sometimes it's just describing the narrative of what was happening, but it's good for us to know that what comes will, sometime, will someday pass. Trials are temporal. God's covenant love is eternal. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, that's true today. But it's not just that. God's compassion is greater than our suffering. Do you believe that? Look at verse 32. Even if he causes suffering, he will show compassion according to the abundance of his faithful love. In other words, even if I go through hardship, God will give me compassion. 
The people of Judah had rejected God's sovereign rule over them. And as a result, they were in exile. Sometimes we go through difficulty and it is because of something we've done. Sometimes we not, might not be able to connect the dots, but the truth of the matter is the Lord will not reject us forever. That's what verse 31 says. And this reminds me of a psalm that's familiar to many of us. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You see, we serve a good God. He loves us. Verse 33 attests to the character of God. He doesn't enjoy bringing affliction or suffering on mankind. That's not God's will. God desires our good and God accomplishes that good in so many ways. And sometimes it's through hardship. I, I uh, grew up, I had a dentist. He's uh, since passed away. His name was Dr. Upshur. He was in um, Lynchburg. That wasn't a good name for a doctor because my older brother, who's so creative, he used to call him Dr. Upchuck because every time he went, it made him sick. We didn't like going to the dentist. I still don't like going to the dentist. I've had a couple of root canals and you're sitting there and, and you say, but you know what? I may not like going to the dentist, but I like what comes on the back end of it. I like when I can chew food and it no longer hurts. I like when things are, are straight, when things are going well. And so as we look at it, uh, Jeremiah here is saying, I'm going to look forward beyond it. I'm going to look because the Lord won't reject us for other, forever. He, he shows compassion to us. And he delights in it. You know who lived that better than anyone was Jesus. Some 600 years afterward. The writer of Hebrews tells us this. That Jesus Christ, Hebrews 12 2, For the joy set before him endured the cross. And we know that he sat down at the right hand of God. In other words, he came through that hardship. And not only did he come through it, he came through it well, and he did what? He interceded for us. So as we look at it here, uh, Jeremiah is saying, it's not going to always last forever. We're going to, this is a season, we're going to press through it. And when we press through it, may God be glorified. Is that your desire and your hardship right now? Or, or are you sitting like he's sitting in verse 19, looking at your situation and grieving in self-pity? One of the best things we can do when we go through a uh, difficulty is find someone else going through a difficulty, either equal or ex beyond what we are, and go talk to them and minister to them and help them. And so we see here that, that the writer understood that we need to go beyond it. So as we close really the study this morning, we see he looked at the situation, then he looked above the situation, then he looked into the situation, and he looked beyond the situation. You know, here in about three or four days, our families will be gathering. Some places there'll be an empty seat. Some places there won't be an empty seat. We've got about 25 in our family that are get, getting together at my brother's house. And, and every one of us will come with different experiences, even within the same household, even under the same roof. But I think we see here, no matter what we're going through, we should possess a grateful heart. Maybe this season, there are no ripples. There's still water in your life. Be grateful for it. But maybe today, you say, you know what? This season is tough for me. Follow the pattern that Jeremiah said here. Look at it. Don't deny it. But don't stay there. Look up to the Lord. Look into the situation. Okay, God, this is what I think about it. But what is good for me to do in this situation? And then look beyond it. And I promise you this. It'll be a blessing. And not only will it be a blessing to you, but God will use you to be a blessing to others. Let's pray. Father, as we looked at your word today. We thank you, Lord, for just the very honesty of Jeremiah. We thank you, Lord, for this process that he went through that we can follow. Father, there's some today, this season is not easy.
going into the season of Thanksgiving and Christmas, and things are different. Father Jeremiah knew things were different. He was in a different land. What was familiar, what was comfortable, what he had experienced in the past was not evident in his life at that time. But Father, I thank you that he set his eyes on you as his portion that never changes. I thank you, Lord, that he was able to look deeper into his situation and what you were doing. And Lord, as a follower of you, to look beyond it. Lord, help us to do the same. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.